Hello. We live in a strange time, a challenging, in challenging times, and we are forced to adapt. And this is what I'm trying to do. So I will offer you this sermon. I'm not in a church. I'm from my basement because uh, worship has been canceled in the basement this morning. But my congregation met to via Facebook Live uh, and there were people and we worshiped together. So I hope this text that was written a few days ago will bring you some kind of insight, some kind of wisdom. So it's about John chapter 4 verses 5 to 42. And must much have changed since the last time I preached on the Samaritan women three years ago. The Me Too movement led to a series of denunciation of sexual violence of all sorts and abuses of all sorts that contributed to the condemnation of powerful men. Governments has begun to rethink the laws and practices when it's time to investigate sexual assaults as well as procedures in during trial. Large corporations are now, are, are now aiming to recruit more women on their board of directors. Still, to state the obvious, the life of 50% of the human population remain difficult. Women do not receive the same opportunities. Different standards apply to them. Microaggressions are a daily reality. The recent scandal of a Canadian oil company dis distributing disgusting stickers involving the young Greta Thunberg is only the last example of all of this. And if you don't believe me because I'm a middle-aged man, well, just ask a woman around you about the last time she has been shush, quiet, or told that she was too much or not enough. She was doing it wrong. She was disturbing the established rules. And what about those times women have been advised by a group of men, of course, to smile a little more and dress differently if they want to have something achieved. And when it does not work, well, those men usually come back and say, well, we told you, but you did not listen to us. You are stubborn and you wanted to do it that your way. Well, too bad for you. Maybe this is will be a lesson because this is what happened to those who are loud and don't want to listen. Yeah. And it is with all this cultural and societal baggage that we come to today's passage from the Gospel according to John. The story of the Samaritan women is a classic. Countless sermons have been written about the story. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Galilee after a short trip in Judea. And they have to go through the province of Samaria and we are told and we know that Jews did not share things in common with Samaritan. So it's a hot day in the village of Sakar. Jesus decides to rest by the well. Disciple goes for food. It was noon. And Jesus sees a woman who come to draw water at Jacob's well. And at this point, we want to say, ha ha. There's something wrong here. The woman should not be there because it's the middle of the day. You see, back then, water was usually drawn during cooler times, like morning or evening. There must be something wrong about this woman. She must be an outcast from her village. Uh, she must have a shady past. She must have been shunned. And we make those assumptions, even if there's a millions of reasons 
to go back to a well during the day like, I don't know, she ran out of water sooner than she planned. Uh, she broke her water jar. Or she was too busy to come early in the morning. But it does not seem to matter. She's not where she expected to be. She's not uh, behaving according to the norm of her society. There must be something wrong with this woman. And usually, when someone look for justify or impression or bias, well, our Bible can be very good at this. So, verse 17 and 18, Jesus said to the Samaritan, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have right now is not your husband. And once again we say, ha, 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 knew it. Samaritan woman is a woman of little virtue. Even if King Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, it does not seem to matter. No respectable women, we say, would have five different husbands and living with another one without being married. Even if in the book, the second book of Kings, chapter 17, tells us that after the Syrians' invasion, Samaria, Samaria was colonized by five different nations, worshipping five different gods. And in Jesus' time, they were closer to the Jew, but not necessarily in essential agreement. You know, five husbands, not married. Mm -hmm. It does not seem to matter. And even if in ancient time, and still today, there's plenty of reason for I have multiple relationship during one's life like her husband died she had been abandoned she was forced to live with a man who could provide and protect her in a very cruel world it does not seem to matter no we say she's a nasty woman without morals she's a whore she's a prostitute she need to repent and change her sinful ways and only a man called Jesus can save her <sighs> only last week I preach on when I was preaching I mentioned on the Gospel of John is all about symbols images metaphors and we should not read this text literally. We encounter Nicodemus, a member of the religious establishment who came during the time of the night. He was in the darkness and he struggled to accept what Jesus, the light of the world, was telling him. Darkness, light, you know. And this week, only a few lines later, we meet a nameless religious outsider who crossed Jesus' path when at noon, when the light is at the brightest time of the day, and she recognized him as a prophet, she got it. She got that he is the light of the world when she's there at noon. But it does not seem to matter. For some reason, we tend to revert to reading this text as the first level. The Samaritan women Jesus met at the, at the well had most likely a past, like all of us as one. Because I'm sure we all have moments in our lives that we would prefer to forget or simply erase. And we can also assume that the Samaritan women knew our status in the community. She had been told the rules of her society. She, uh, she has been instructed not to talk or interact with male, with Jewish males. 
Nevertheless, when the opportunity for an open conversation about the odd button topics that divide the Jews and the Samaritan from one another show itself, she sees it. She disregards the expectation and the cultural norms in order to embark with Jesus in the journey of discovery. And when the disciple come back to eat something, they cannot believe what they are seeing. They are dumbfounded that Jesus would speak to a Samaritan woman. And well, they're still scratching their head to understand their master behaviors. The disciple do not notice she's already have left everything behind and she's sharing with everyone the new life she has just found. Because nothing predisposes her to speak about her faith and proclaim the good news. And there were many reasons for the leaders of her village to ridicule her, to silence her. Nevertheless, the Samaritan women became the first missionary in the Gospels. And we often believe that one characteristic, that one story can define an individual. And sometimes we think that life would be simpler if everybody can be identified, organized, and put in little boxes. We, we want to assume that all introverts are like this and all Asian kids in our society behave like that. And this is where stereotypes come from. And we all know from experience their limits. Now Jesus seems to understand that the Samaritan women is more than what the people believe and expected. And for this reason, he sees her. She exists for him. She has value, worth, and significance, a treatment different from which the Samaritan women is accustomed. And today, as we're reading this passage, we are challenged to ask ourselves about those we do not see. Who are we defining by one visible characteristic? Who are interrupted, shush, or silenced in our society or in our churches? And sadly enough, if we are honest, the list could be very long. Those who are racialized, disabled, or homeless. What about recovering addicts or women that simply want to take the rightful places in a man's world? Our call is not to develop politically correct policies or trying to figure it out when we will have the time and the means to include more people in our structure, in our midst. Our call is to reach out to people beyond stereotypes and cliches and do this today. Our call is to connect and build bridges with individuals who are not necessarily meeting our expectation or corresponding to our desires. Our call is to help every human being not to become what we want them to be, but to achieve the full potential God gave them. The Samaritan women we meet in the Gospel according to John is nothing less than the spiritual matriarch of all the loud, persistent, and fearless women who existed across the centuries. In a world that would like nothing better than silence her, she stood her ground. She crossed boundaries. She defied assumptions. And by doing so, today she gives us hope to all the nameless and overlooked people in this world because she had the courage to speak up and stand for herself. Thanks be to God and Amen.